All right, let me come to all my special guests out here. Uh, Manish Tiwari, spokesperson of the Congress uh, of, the, of the Congress Party, has also been a minister, of course. Uh, uh, P. N. Vijay, spokesperson of the BJP, financial analyst, as indeed does Dr. Arvind Virmani, joining us, former chief economic advisor to the government of India, former executive director uh, of the IMF, who will weigh in on, on this as well. Vikas Singh is a former additional solicitor general of India, and therefore will help us understand the legalities in the constitutional provision in this. And uh, Mihir Sharma, great to have you with us, columnist, senior journalist, uh, and always a pleasure. I just want to put it up for you. What is the money bill? A money bill essentially comes under Article 110 of the Constitution. It essentially involves payment, receipt, withdrawals, appropriations from the Consolidated or Contingency Fund of India. Finance bills, which is the budget, tax, does come under a money bill. So any abolition, remission, alteration, regulation of any tax does fit into a finance bill. Any dispute over whether a bill is a money bill or not is taken up by the Lok Sabha Speaker. Now, why is all of this important? And bear with me while I take you through this because it could have a significant bearing, if not this year, next year, year after next, next parliament. At some point, all of this could become really important. A money bill has to be introduced in the Lok Sabha. Once passed by the Lok Sabha, it is sent to the Rajya Sabha. The Rajya Sabha cannot reject or amend a money bill. The Rajya Sabha can suggest recommendations. The Lok Sabha has the power to reject those recommendations. And that is exactly what happened this week. The Rajya Sabha came in and said, we have some issues with what you have put into the finance bill. We are suggesting five amendments. The next morning, the Lok Sabha rejected those without even much of a debate. It just said, we're not accepting it. And life moved on. Pian Vijay, we've been asking the government as to why all of this was done. And one of the reasons stated was that, yeah, you know, but these guys are blocking what's happening in the Rajya Sabha. So, in a sense, isn't the government then almost saying, because they are blocking the Rajya Sabha, we're going to use this to circumvent the checks and balances that are built into the Constitution of India? First is, the Speaker was engaged in this, not once, but twice. And she gave the ruling, uh, you, the ruling is in the public uh, domain. Yeah. And she said there have been past precedences, past practices. She quoted something which was done in 2011, 2012, 2001, 2002. By the Congress party there. Congress party and by the Atil Bihari Vajpayee Yashwan Sinha. And she said, based on this, I have no option but to allow this. This is point number one. Second is, Arun Jaitley, publicly and privately, has said, that these, many of these, or most of these, are incidental to the budget. Let me give you a small example. If we are having, if the budget is working to a plan, and if we have certain changes in, say, provident fund, certain changes in dividend, the way dividend is taxed, it is often in India, because of whatever reason, that that has to be, the amendment of the provident fund act has to be done. Amendment of companies act has to be done. So, if that got scuttled, then, no, wait, wait, correct. I'm giving you, the reason. No, no, you're 100% correct in that. So there will be changes and that have the, to be introduced in a finance All these changes have bill. some implication on the taxes or on the consolidated fund of India, as uh, as the constitution says. Thirdly, I, Vikram, when uh, you talk about the constitution being, you know, violated, this, etc. Let me put a counter question. Let's be practical. In 2014, we had an election where the NDA got a massive majority of 334 seats. Okay, after that, we have had several elections which have in effect totally changed the complexion of the states. Maharashtra, Uttar Pradesh, huge states, Andhra Pradesh. Hang now, what are you saying? So, therefore, what I'm saying you don't is, need to come, go by what no, when, no, what I'm saying is, when you are one is legal, another is practical. I am asking you, as a citizen of India, is it fair that when the people of India have repeatedly not once, but repeatedly. You know, wanted a. They, please, please, don't, don't. Please, don't. You're, you're not. We have. You, you are all on, is, you are on a winning which is, spree which is, up to which a point. Which is more violative? A small minority which is hanging on to power in the Rajya Sabha for the next it's seven the months. Rajya Sabha. We all know that in February. He is looking in February. Right now. Listen to me. He may do so many things. He, no, I'm not I'm talking to the I'm, Congress I'm talking, party. I'm saying he has Bikram, a former additional I'm saying, solicitor you're general. You're not allowing me to complete. Saying, what are you saying? You're not allowing me to complete. Yeah, okay. All of us know, including the audience knows, that come February, March, the complexion of the Rajya Sabha Absolutely. will be you totally know what you changed. Want from that so point is it correct? Is it correct, you ask me, 
for a minority Rajya Sabha to try and scuttle what the country wants. Hang on. Well, the Rajya Sabha is going to change in you know seven months so time I or eight months time or nine months time. time. So mm -hmm. while that process is on, it's okay in a sense to subvert or to no, bypass no, no, I didn't the Rajya say Sabha. That. I'm asking: is that's it is it correct for the Rajya Sabha to scuttle what the people of India want? I'm not saying it, is it correct for a minority Rajya Sabha for, uh, to, at its whims and yeah. fancies to go, turn back our bills. That's what I'm saying. You're misinterpreting okay. me. Okay. So help us understand the constitutional <laughs> provision before we get back to the politics. Constitutionally, well, what's the correct As view? the constitution was drafted, and I'm talking of 1950, there were two assumptions which were underlying. Firstly, that member of parliaments will behave responsibly and everybody expected member of parliaments always to behave responsibly. And they're not doing that. So, PM Vijay does have so, a point so in that. that it's not that parliament is that behaving extent responsibly. He has a point. Not now, but not but in the previous uh, administration. It's been 20 years. I don't know how many big fights we've done on why it's, it's that parliament is not functioning But the other very important part of what was framed then was that this was not meant to be a money bill, what is being done now. Whether you have these tribunals coming up, whether it is the Aadhaar bill, these were not to be money bills. Political these funding. are being done, political funding, these are being done only to avoid the Rajya Sabha. Now we come to the third question, what happens if this is being done? You have to, Vikram, ultimately leave it at some level. And the level, unfortunately, the constitution says is the speaker. If the Supreme Court, supposing tomorrow there were some judges who started playing politics and started overruling decisions of the speaker, who what after that? So ultimately, at some level, you have to stop. The speaker may be justified in taking a call that this is a situation where if uh, Congress says day, BJP says black uh, night. If the BJP says day, Congress says night. That's what we've been seeing in Parliament. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, the, the, the BJP didn't let the Congress uh, rule. And when, when the, the Aam Aadmi Party gets inside it, they're <laughs> and that's, that's making it even, completely something even worse. It's on a different planet. So ultimately, if you look at the reality that has happened in the last at least two decades, where the, the members of Parliament have not behaved in larger national interest. If so you look can at I, the can, bill, I just, can, I just, can I just come in on that? So two points which you made, and, and I'm, I'm taking them both forward. One, you're saying, if the speaker has said that it is all right, for this to go ahead as a money bill. You can argue, you can say this is against the spirit of the constitution and you're doing X, Y, Z. But the letter of the law has therefore been upheld. Absolutely. Because the letter of the law has been upheld that's by the, them. That's also There's part of the There's nothing illegal same. in what has been done. It is. You it can, is if the you opposition me, can quibble, but they've done something if illegal. If you ask me, you ask my opinion, these are not money bills. Yeah. Most of them. Before I come to Manish, one more point. On that other aspect of what he said, that they block the Rajya Sabha and don't allow it to function. And you are right, when the constitution was being framed, maybe they hadn't anticipated that parliamentarians would be as obstructionist, obstructionist as they have become. However, there is a provision in the constitution just for that, which is to call a joint session of parliament. You can call the Lok Sabha and the Rajya Sabha and get bills through, through that mechanism. But unfortunately, for a money bill, the, the BJP doesn't even want to do that. Because in a but money I'm bill, on, they, they need not have made this bill, a money bill. They could have done whatever yes, it is that yes, they want to do. I put together a list of, they could have, of, of legislation combined, combined saying they don't want the Rajya Sabha to block it. And now we're going to call a joint session and pass A, B, C, D, E. So that that's would, it would remain Sabha, a finance right? bill. That's it. Uh, in a way. That's, what you're that's another way. That's a way of doing what you're doing, but without doing it as a subterfuge, but doing it as a strategy. Because if you have got this big a majority in Rajya Sabha <laughs> and your minority is somewhat small, yes. when you put both arithmetically, the views of the Rajya Sabha will be ignored. And, and by so, the way, so it's the same thing. So way, what are you day, saying? By, no, it's no, hang on, hang on, hang on. It's not the same thing. thing. It's, it's not the same thing. It's not the same thing. As he's pointing out, in one case, in is one it, case, you are sort of cutting corners. In the other case, you're going absolutely out of the letter and spirit of the constitution. I don't think the joint house can't be faulted on the ground that you have done some kind of a manipulation to pass a bill which otherwise you're not entitled to pass. You are willingly saying something dangerous. If today we undermine the authority of the speaker, which means we undermine the legislature, that's a very serious thing. No, so it's okay to undermine the Rajya Sabha, no, no, no. but not to undermine the no, speaker. No, no, no. Who are you? Who are you? I'm asking you this. You know more than the speaker? No, no. About, I'm just saying. No, no, no. Saying, no, no so hang on, hang on. what he said, constitutional makers said that the speaker is the final authority. End of story. Well, Vikram, uh, what you've heard from Mr. Vijay is actually a classical uh, explanation of the subversion of the constitution. Because if you look at article 110, article 110 <coughs> does not only define what is a money bill. 
it also defines what is not a money bill. So therefore, it is extremely explicit both in its intent and its character. And if you are going to paint every bill as a money bill, saying because there is an appropriation attached to every bill, so therefore every bill becomes a money bill, I am afraid you are completely going against the letter. Forget the spirit of the constitution. Yes, the uh, provision says that the uh, decision of the speaker is final with regard to what is a money bill or what is not a money bill. But then again, if there comes, you come to a situation whereby you find that the speaker's decision is not in consonance with the constitution. Let's remember, the speaker is not above the constitution. The speaker is a creature of the constitution. Then, of course, you have the recourse that the courts ultimately may st uh, step in and even look at the entire sovereignty of the house as to whether if the house in its sovereign capacity takes a decision which is blatantly against the letter and spirit of the constitution, then it may require intervention. Uh, Dr. Imrani, you've been chief, former you know, chief economic advisor. This time, uh, and in fact last year also, when the Aadhaar bill was being passed, a lot of people say, but why is this necessarily a money bill? What would be your take on this? Well, budget always has a number of things connected with uh, taxation uh, and tax collection. So uh, I do not, uh, you know, have any uh, special knowledge about the legal issues. So I'm not uh, addressing those at all. But to my memory and knowledge, uh, everything which is connected with taxes and expenditure used to be in the budget and used to be treated in the manner uh, of a money bill. Now, of course, this discussion has become very intense. I don't recall any such discussion. Uh, before. Yeah, so Dr. Vermani, I'll tell you why that issue has particularly come up because what happened last week and it, it really, you know, has, has gathered momentum since then as people have understood the full implication of what all was put in. The, and I'm going to put them up. Here were some of the amendments that were put into the finance bill. And, and this really is a question which Mayor Pat, I want to get you in on. Questions of political funding, the removal of the name of political parties to which a contribution is made. The cap of 7.5%, that is removed, so therefore a lot of anonymous funding can come in. The fact that, uh, you know, the powers of search and how that so, is going to play itself out. Aadhaar itself and the fact that Aadhaar is now compulsory for all income tax. These are so, major-ish decisions. These are big enough steps and not directly linked organically to the budget. That's the argument that the opposition is making. The point here has to be that um, the Rajya Sabha you know, the Rajya Sabha serves as, um, you know, the, the, the constitutional and the political science idea behind uh, bodies like the Rajya Sabha upper houses, is that they serve to sort of calm down the enthusiasms of uh, individual moments in time. All right. There's a reason why the Rajya Sabha reflects the political dynamics of maybe eight years ago. All right. And eight years from now, it will reflect the political dynamics of today to a certain degree. It is to say that things like Mr. Vijay was saying, the immediate emphasis that a, a particular government and or a, the general population at a moment in time feels about something um, should sort of meet with uh, a, a certain sort of intertemporal... Uh, so uh, you're saying that's chance. an ideological reason why you should not allow the checks and balances to be eroded. Yes, people can be winning elections. You've had in the United States, for example, right now, Donald Trump has won an election. And as we are seeing, many of his impulses and the things that he's wanting to push through, he's won an election, he's the president of the United States. But you're having the judiciary, you're having Congress, you're having others stepping inside to a great extent to try and check some of what he is doing because they're saying... That's the nature of checks and balances. Just because you won an election doesn't mean you should be allowed to do whatever you want. I agree with you that, uh, you know, bulldozing the Rajya Sabha is not a good thing. I agree with you. And the checks and balances, we, we have learned that from high school about checks and balances. The point I'm trying to make here, Vikram, and I think U.S. Congress and Senate are very different because the checks and balances there are very different than in India, where uh, I think the Lok Sabha has a lot more power. Uh, the point I'm trying to make is that we have, in all practice, had a very difficult situation. We want to do things, but unfortunately, we have found time and again that Parliament, Rajya Sabha is not functioning in winter. So we had, so I, let me say we use tactics. But we use strategy. We use tactics. We made tactics sure that the tactics strategy. were within you the law. You don't want to bulldoze the Rajya Sabha, so you're going no, to use tactics no, Vikram, and strategy. That has been what done five saying? times before. It's been done. That we justifies our, 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 our spin masters, 
our spin masters bowl them out. End of story. Spin you go to the court. Spin masters bowl them out. <laughs> yes, you go to court. Let's see. Is Jairam has already gone to court. Let's see. Spin masters bowling them out. This is not. No, Vikram, may I come and court? Yeah, the sure, other sure, bowling sure. China men at you the see, Australians. You, this is the. Point. I, Vikram, I again go to the point. After, if you, I will give you the numbers of what Rajya Sabha is likely to be in uh, in early next year. It will be very Will different, Vikram. But hang on, hang on. It will be very different. But, but Mr. Vijay, yes, I agree with you. So therefore, when you control the Rajya Sabha, you will be in a position to have any laws <coughs> that you want. I think the questions which are being asked is that, should you be using it? And if you, you yourself are saying... I don't understand your problem. On one side, we have That's a... my problem. No, 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 no Vikram. <laughs> now, what's <laughs> NDTV's problem? Let me explain. <laughs> Let me explain that, the problem. I mean, apart from the... We are I, 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 hang on, 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 hang on. If you don't understand the problem... Hang on, hang on, hang on, wait a minute, wait a minute. We are reporting on issues that have been discussed and raised in parliament by members of the opposition. And while there is a parliament and there is an opposition and the opposition is saying certain things in parliament, it is going to be the duty of the media to report on it. Yeah, yeah. And you, Unless you and want to you, circumvent that you, also. And to report very subjectively, all of us know that. Uh, you see, <laughs> you are here to make your opinion, you are yeah, yeah. to say what you want to. Yeah, you see Vikram, the uh, very distinguished now you're lawyer, really of, like lawyer of this country, <laughs> a very distinguished lawyer of this country, quoted the constitution and said the final legal authority on this is the speaker. Yes, but he also Fine. said he didn't agree with what the speaker was doing. He, I mean, there might be another lawyer who agrees with the speaker. You see, the reason why the Raj Sabha was conceived as a house in perpetuity was primarily to ensure that there is a certain amount of reasoned and a certain amount of reasoned uh, ex uh, application of mind to what may be the excesses of the uh, a, a, a dispensation which controls the local. So by the moment, is right? Well, which mayor has made. Now, what you are seeing today, and what Mr. Vijay is not putting in those uh, those many words, is the endogrization of India, right? Like President Endogran in Turkey wants this referendum so that he can have extra constitutional powers. What Mr. Vijay and his party are essentially trying to, to tell you is that, look, because we won an election, we care a hoot for the constitution. The constitution can go for a toss. And so, therefore, if the Raj Sabha stands in the way, the Raj Sabha be damned and we'll do exactly what we want. And this, that is why Mr. Yachuri rightly described it as the first step towards a totalitarian state. This is exactly what a totalitarian state is. All right. Arvind Dirmani, your take on this. One is... Uh, uh, the, the, the issue of, uh, you know, uh, uh, strengthening the powers of the tax commissioner. Though personally, I think it's a bad thing to do. I think there is nothing wrong with having that in the budget. I mean, I oppose that substantive thing, but I don't see how that should uh, not be in the budget and not be called uh, part of tax collection, which is money. Second uh, one which I agree with the government, uh, agree meaning in the constitutional sense which you are discussing, is, is the Aadhaar. The Aadhaar issue as far as I remember from the last budget was that for getting welfare benefits you have to use Aadhaar. I think again that, you know, uh, from my knowledge of the corruption and inefficiency in the welfare system which I call the one-third rule, it is perfectly legitimate to make that a part of the expenditure which is the budget. Now, one place where I do not uh, agree uh, is that I, I think even though one could say bonds are a financial instrument which could be in the budget, I think it is a political issue. It is done for a political purpose and political bonds. So there I would uh, tend to think that it would have been better uh, uh, to not treat it as a money bill. Your, first of all, I just want to get you in to respond to what he said, that some of these may be okay to sneak in, some not so okay. Actually, if you look at the constitution, there is a distinction between a finance bill and a money bill. Mm -hmm. A money bill is only dealing with what is in 110 and it's actually the word used is only and that amendment was sought when the constitution was being drafted to delete that word only and it was rejected. So a money bill is very different from a finance bill. So what he's saying, maybe legally he's not... Well, because when you introduce a finance bill, you can have an amendment to the Income Tax Act bringing in certain parts, but that need not be a money bill. That's number okay. one. Number two, if you look at the, the democratic polity that we are in, in this country, and where we have a Rajya Sabha, which is a permanent body and which doesn't change in spite of a Lok Sabha changing, 
our correct course of action would have been to not term these as money bills and take it to the Raj Sabha. Before taking it to the Raj Sabha, have an all party meeting, try and convince the members, which is the correct democratic way of functioning. And if they are still not on board, and if you still feel that your country can't progress because of that obstructionist attitude, then have a joint session and get it passed. In that way, you would not have violated the constitution. According to me, this is a violation of the constitution. But that authority is with the speaker, so that matter ends there because you can't. Okay. The speaker's actually, authority is final. It can't be questioned. Actually, in court. I was just about to say that if you take a look at, and it's strange that all of this has happened in a week when you have also seen one of the grandest examples in independent India of all political parties coming together, pulling together, sitting together, resolving their issues in a spirit of cooperation to pass the GST. Isn't that a, a right model to take, is I think the point he was making. Probably uh, my sense is, and I'm not an expert on this, there was no time for that because, uh, you know, April 1st is coming in. Uh, no, no, the, not, not, a lot of them have nothing to do with April That's 1st. Right. For instance, no, no. merging uh, these tribunals. Yeah. Now an airport tribunal will be looked in by a telecom tribunal. Now, these are important issues yeah, yeah. where who should be a member, no, some of them, who some of them how are, they should be appointed. Some of them are, these are all passed as money bills, which is not the spirit of the constitution. The, Whether it be the Aadhaar bill or this or even the election funding, these are not meant to be money bills. So now let's just look at these issues and see whether there was another way of doing it. Whether, for example, a consensus was possible because even the issues out here have raised a lot of eyebrows. Let's take Aadhaar, for example, which was actually passed as a money bill last year, which also raised quite a lot of ruckus, and no doubt you will remember. But made, people have expressed concern about this. The fact, I mean, Aadhaar, I think itself is a great is a great thing, and, and I think most everyone here in the audience has Aadhaar. Yes. yes. All right, there you have it. So this is like a compliant and a tax compliant uh, uh, audience out here. But it's interesting that you're having a situation where the Supreme Court is discussing this very issue on Aadhaar. It's not very clear whether Aadhaar is something that can be compulsory to get subsidies and benefits from the government. In fact, the Supreme Court right now it says it is not compulsory. That's an observation, not a ruling. However, Aadhaar is going to be compulsory to pay tax to the government. So it's a bit strange. Well, I think it's uh, um, what's worrying about this is that the government is sort of putting itself on a collision course with the Supreme Court. and. Uh, which is, you know, uh, 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 sometime in the future is going to lead to a bit of trouble. On the one hand, um, you know, we can say that the, uh, it isn't uh, technically, Aadhaar isn't technically compulsory for benefiting from a lot of the uh, uh, government schemes, for uh, uh, receiving services from the government. Uh, but the truth is that we've all experienced the fact that it is, has in effect been made compulsory for a large set of, of, of government services. So you have the Supreme Court observing that it is not compulsory. You have our own experience, which is that it is compulsory. And then you have in the middle, you have Ravi Shankar Prasad standing up last week and saying, um, Aadhaar is compulsory for nothing, which is um, you know, a sort of odd um, reflection of what may or may not be true.